Hello again, and in this episode, we're looking at how to make amazing 3D models for your film or games. This is the workflow of the 3D artist, and it's information for beginners about where to start. It's not a detailed tutorial, it is just an overview. So by the end of this video, you should know what you need to look at and what you need to learn. So to start with, most 3D models will follow a similar workflow from start to finish. They'll start with a detailed model. This might be sculpted or built up from basic primitives. There's two clear approaches. One is sculpting and the other is hard surface modeling. And I'll go through the differences later. Once you have a detailed model, it's likely to be very high poly. So you'll need to retopologize. This model is around 2 million faces and takes a lot of processing power just to view. That's why we need to retopologize. If it's for a game, it will have to be retopologized to quite a low poly count. This will be dependent on whether your game is for PC or mobile, but it can range right from 1,000 to 25,000 faces. If your model is for film, then it will more likely be between 100,000 and 300,000 faces. Retopology is converting your model into more manageable topology, which is the position of faces in relation to one another. It makes it a lot more efficient. Lower poly will mean faster rendering, and often the retopology is better for animations. After this, the next stage is to unwrap. This is to get the 2D texture information onto a 3D model. So it's a bit like how a label wraps around a bottle and has one seam down the edge. You go around your model, marking seams, and then unwrap. The next stage is texturing. There's a few stages to this. One stage would be baking normal maps or displacement maps. The normal map takes the detailed information from your high poly, which is either sculpted or hard surface modeled, and converts it into light information in the form of a texture on the low poly. Displacement maps are slightly different because they take the same information, but they actually adapt the geometry. So you need a higher poly count for those to work. They're not as common as normal maps in games, but can be used in films. Both normal maps and displacement maps are not always necessary if there are little to no details where there is a very smooth surface all across the model. The other aspect to texturing is putting materials onto your object so it starts to mimic real life. So obviously a tree would have a bark texture. These can be taken from photos and then stenciled on or pasted on, or they can be painted. And some stylized games have very hand painted styles, whereas other games have realistic styles and therefore will use the templates taken from photographs. Very common these days for realistic texturing is what's known as PBR, which is physically based rendering. This will have reflection maps, more commonly known as glossy or roughness, and that will help the character integrate into the environment seamlessly, whereas hand-painted textures make it difficult to move the character from one environment to another. The next stage will be rigging, where you build a bone structure for your model. If your model's for film, then sometimes it involves building a muscular structure as well. And after that comes weight painting and skinning. This is the influence of the bones on certain parts of the mesh. So it ensures, let's say the forearm bone will only move the forearm of the mesh and not the neck, for example. These weights are often painted on. The next stage is animating. Now games will generally have short animations, which are sometimes looped animations like walk cycles or run cycles and the game engine blends the animations together. So animators will animate each of these, including an idle animation and perhaps a death animation and so on. Films can be different as you tend to animate everything with more detail. You can set up certain movements like facial movements that repeat, but generally everything is animated individually. So if a character moves from one location to another, you would animate the whole walking sequence and movement sequence. You can also use motion capture and then add this to your rig as long as the rigs are compatible with each other. So if you have two different projects and you want to use the motion capture information from one project and bring it into another, you will need an identical rig. The last stage is compositing. This involves integrating your model into the wider scene. And usually it requires close attention to lighting and matching colors, especially if you're doing any visual effects for film. Generally characters with the PBR materials or the physically based rendering materials will integrate quite well whereas hand-painted models may need more work. And it's often the case that you need to think about composition in terms of setting up models in an environment. 
So what sort of models should you be creating and what will suit your style? There's two workflows. There's a technical workflow, as I would call it, and an artistic workflow. Of course, both can be seen as technical and artistic, but they're names I've given to specific pathways for now. Both pathways can be advantageous to learn and both can be combined to make great pieces. The first workflow is the sculpting workflow. It's a very artistic way of creating and it suits painters and other artists coming from different disciplines. They tend to use graphics tablets or display tablets and literally draw the objects. Hard surface modeling on the other hand is very technical and often follows a clear reference or background image. Those background images are taken and drawn around and the model is built up with panels, planes or primitives. Some people prefer primitives and then subdividing and extruding. Others prefer to trace around and then fill in the gaps. Often those that come from a coding background tend to prefer this approach. You don't always have to follow a background image. You can just create the models by looking at references. With both of these workflows, a good keen eye for detail and observing the shapes and flow of the environment around you is really important. Is one better than the other? Well, yes and no. For organic shapes with heavy emphasis on flow and random lumps and bumps, it can be quicker and easier to sculpt. So people, creatures, monsters are suitable for this. Also, if you have an artistic background, this may be easy and more comfortable for you to adapt to. It can be slightly more free in creativity as the shapes are quick to pull and push around, but it is much tougher to get clean edges and angles. So hard surface models like mechanical objects can be very tough. Hard surface modeling is, as the name suggests, for hard surfaces such as machinery or architecture. So anything that has a rigid, simple shape, hard surface modeling is going to be much more suitable. So the workflow does change slightly dependent on whether you go for a sculpting workflow or a hard surface modeling approach. The sculpting workflow will stay the same as I mentioned earlier. So sculpting, retopologizing, baking textures, painting the textures and so on. The difference will come with hard surface modeling in terms of the retopology. Retopology of hard surface modeling tends to be a bit simpler as all the edges are clearly defined already. Whereas retopologizing a sculpted model tends to take that bit longer. So hopefully this overview will give you some idea of where you need to look to and what modeling approaches might work for you. Do comment with any thoughts that you might have on the processes and let me know if I've left anything out. And of course, let me know if you want to see more of these sort of videos and anything else that might interest you. Thanks for watching.